Well, it's always a pleasure to be joined now on GCR by a man that uh, you've been watching for years. Now you're watching him over on John Boy. You see the Baseball Today logo there in the background. He is our friend, Mr. Chris Rose, and he's back with us here on GCR. Chris, it's Glenn. It's great to chat with you, dude. Thank you for taking the time for me. Absolutely. My pleasure. What's going on? Hey, man, everything is good. I, I was, you know, I, I was watching baseball today, and you guys were talking about Tark Scooble last week. And I, I'm in this really weird place where, like, there's this part of me that says, hell yeah, right? Like, it's it's the Scooble that we're talking about. Burns and Scooble mm -hmm. in a rotation, get it, go win the World Series. And then you say, and if it costs you Jackson the holiday, and I say, whoa, 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 ease up on all that. I don't know what to make of it because I have this like equal part desire to see the Orioles say it's been 40 years since we won a World Series. Let's go. But at the same time, I don't know where the line is between going for it and recklessness. And I can't figure out what that is. Well, but Tarek Skubal isn't a guy. He, he's not a rental. Tarek Skubal is a guy that you can extend and have at the top of your rotation, hopefully for the next five years. So the Orioles are in a very, very different position than most teams. Most teams, if they empty the cover, right, if they give up two or three or four prospects in a major deal, they're screwed for the foreseeable future. The Orioles just have a conveyor belt of guys that they keep churning out. So what they have to do, what Michael Elias has to do is figure out which guys he can't live without. Like, that's that's the deal. Which Who are the guys that are totally untouchable? Right. And then, I, and I don't know if Jackson Holiday is on that list. You would presume he is because he's the top prospect in baseball now that Skeens is is all the way up. But it, in the pecking order, our point was when we made that, when we had that discussion on baseball today, the point was, is that he's not going to be Gunnar Henderson. Like Gunnar Henderson is the guy you have to pay. And then Adley Rutschman is the guy you have to pay. And Jordan Westberg has come on and had an all-star type first half and seems to be like a dude that you can count on. And Colton Kowser is fantastic in the outfield as a young guy who doesn't even have a full season worth of at-bats yet. And Kerstead is a guy that, holy smokes, like, what is he? So the point is, is that as great as Jackson Holiday seems like he might be one day, in the pecking order of the Orioles in terms of young guys' importance, to the franchise moving forward, is he better suited to go get something that you do not have right now? And that is a guy that is controllable right. for the foreseeable future that also goes at the very top of your rotation. So I guess, and by the way, I don't really actually disagree with anything that you said. I think the fear is with someone like Scooble, you're dealing with someone who's obviously already had Tommy John and another significant elbow injury. Should you be trading that valuable of a commodity and 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 whether that's that person is going to be the guy in baltimore or not that valuable of a commodity for someone with that significant of an, a history of elbow injuries but point to a pitcher that doesn't have it there you're not worried about i mean every pitcher first of all bells and whistles goes off when a guy gets to 100 pitches or 160 innings thrown like we don't know that those are the numbers. And all of a sudden, it's guys who are throwing hard, that are throwing with that much spin. It's virtually inevitable. It really is. I mean, and and Tyler Glass now, who's a regular contributor on our interview show, the Chris Rose Rotation, said there's not one guy, pitcher in baseball who wouldn't do it, too. Right. Who wouldn't say, hey, listen, I am going to throw as hard as I can, max effort with as much spin and try and go to driveline in the offseason and improve myself if, if it will guarantee me nine figures. And Tarek Skubal is a guy who's going to get a nine-figure contract, whether that's from the Detroit Tigers, the Baltimore Orioles, or somebody else when he becomes a free agent. He is going to get it, mm -hmm. barring a major catastrophic second injury within a very short time span, which usually doesn't happen. It's happened to Dustin May. Shohei had two surgeries within a six-year span. But there aren't a ton of guys that it's happened to. So they're going to be willing to roll the dice. And I just think for a team like Baltimore, which has the ability to win it all this year, why wouldn't you? Particularly with the fact that you don't know what's going to happen with Corbin Burns at the end of the year. 
is it safe to say that this is not a I'm looking to trade Jackson Holiday at the debt? This is a unique Tarek Scoobal no. is the exact guy that this team needs right now. Absolutely. There's yeah. no way I would do it for I mean, I'm not even sure I would do it for Garrett Crochet. Right. I, I mean, because Garrett Crochet is a guy who he's already hit his high in terms of innings thrown mm -hmm. for any season at the professional level. Remember until this year, he was a bullpen guy, right? Scooble, he's built up, you know, he has thrown innings. And so have at it. you you get him right now to have him pitch every fifth day after Burns to hold off the Yankees, presumably, and then go get one of those top two seeds and go from there. And damn, I, I no, I, you know how I, exciting I would be if I was an Orioles fan and in game one, I'm throwing Corbin Burns and game two, I'm throwing Tarek Scooble. Yeah, it's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, that's uh, that's a uh, Randy Johnson, Kurt Schilling type of feeling that you have. Mm -hmm. if that's the top of your rotation. Chris Rose is with us here on GCR, of course, from John Boy. I, Chris, I I everything you're feeling, I think I feel. And I think the extent is. It's not just to try to win the World Series right now. It's that it also fits with the greater window that you have, because as you point out, you have Scooble for at least the two more seasons. I think the question is, is it if that's what it takes, if you have to do holiday for Scooble, do you need it to be Scooble? Can you build a World Series winner this year with Eric Fetty added to the rotation with I don't know, Andrew Abbott in Cincinnati, something like that. Does it need to be Scooble? Can you do something in between these two things and still have a World Series caliber roster? You can, uh, but it's going to cost you something, right? And I mean, look, I would go out and get the best that I could. I just, I, I think the Orioles are in such a unique position. They can win the World Series without making a move, but they have a way better shot of doing it if they go get somebody else, right? Yeah, I I mean, you know, it's funny, Chris. I don't know that I agree. I don't know that they can. I just I think road, they you, can. Have two, you have two starting pitchers that you trust in the playoffs right now. Like, I, that's that's extraordinary to try to win a World Series with. I understand that. Um, but it can be. I mean, we didn't think there was any way in the world that the Arizona Diamondbacks were going to get to the World Series last year. We were that's like, fair. Okay. Okay, you know, they got Zach Gallen and they've got Merrill Kelly, but mm -hmm. who the hell is going to throw? And then all of a sudden, Brandon Fott's like, well, like <laughs> whoa, like how did that happen? And then their bullpen became basically shut down all the way until the World Series. Like weird things happen in October. And that's why, by the way, if they do pull the trigger and the Orioles are the one seed and they get bounced in the divisional round because that happens an awful lot, more so in the National League in recent years than the American League. But it's it's so tough to make it to the World Series. Like you have a couple bad games, and all of a sudden you're the 111 win Dodgers from two years ago, and you're out right. before you know it. Courtesy of the San Diego Padres, the Padres were nowhere close in ability to the Los Angeles Dodgers that year. They were just better in four games, and that's it happens. But I'm just telling you, if I'm the Orioles. And if I were an Orioles fan, I would want us to do it, even if it costs us the likes of Jackson Holiday. And oh, by the way, it's going to cost you more than Jackson Holiday. No, That's no doubt. Going to get right. You so right. it's going to be somebody else in that group, too. The You brought up Garrett Crochet. And I'm not saying there wouldn't be some price that you'd be willing. Like, are you at a point where you just say that's not the right thing for a team that's trying to win a World Series this year to do? I think it's a tough one. Uh, and. Ploof and I go back and forth on baseball today on this. He is much more willing to pull the trigger on Garrett Crochet than I am. I'm not saying it can't happen. I just think that you have to be so measured in his innings down the stretch right. to make sure that he is available. Um, if you're a team that trades for him to, A, make the playoffs, but if you're a team like the Dodgers, let's say, that they're going to win the NL West. Nobody's going to give them a fight. So then to be the right guy to start somewhere in that rotation, because to me, they've got a ton of question marks, right? We don't know what Kershaw we're going to see for the first time on Thursday. Tyler Glass now is going to throw the most innings in his career. Mm -hmm. We don't know about if Yamamoto, he thinks he'll be back by the end of the season. But even this weekend, he said something like, I'm hopeful to be back. It wasn't like, oh, yeah, I'm coming back in early September. It was, I'm hopeful. 
So there's they have a ton of question marks. Do you want another one with a guy who was great during the first half, was freaking awesome, lights out, but I don't know what he's going to give you in September and October. Yep. yep. No, I agree. I agree. I think it's the wrong thing. If the Tigers say Scoobles just off the table, it's just not happening. Mm -hmm. We think we can win. Is there anyone of that next group of pitchers that stands out to you and says, hey, I would do this. I would aim for this over the rest of the group. Yeah, I mean, you had him last year after the deadline. Don't, oh, you can't ready. say it. You can't no, say that's, it. That's well, right. He, I, I think know. he works for twenty-eight other teams, but not yeah. the Orioles. Yeah. Jack Flaherty. So, and he has had a remarkable. I know that Orioles fans want to turn, you know, thumb their nose at it and just say, "Oh, that's that's horrible." But Jack Flaherty's had a great hey, year. He could okay, have let, let's let's talk about it for a second, Chris, because my mm -hmm. reaction is. At this point, I have to wonder if there's something unique about the circumstances that Jack Flaherty thrown into a playoff race after everything that he went through a year ago and bought that it just it doesn't work. And maybe I'm being too dismissive of that. I, I think there was a different pitch this year that I would somebody was trying to explain to me. But I it just feels like putting him right back in the same spot. You're you're asking for problems to return. Yeah, well, I would imagine that there's PTSD on both sides yeah. of that equation. That's why I said I think it works everywhere else but Baltimore. So, uh, you know, he does look like a totally different pitcher. I've seen probably five or six of his starts in their entirety, and he looks much more like the guy who finished top five in the Cy Young voting, I think, in 2019 than he has the last few years where he struggled with his health and his command. He's really, really looking sharp. And I think he'll be a difference maker down the stretch for some team, just not Baltimore. The uh, the Orioles have also been tied to Mason Miller, um, who I have I've thought all along that like price. Th this is Mike Elias we're talking about. This is a group of Yale educated people. The Pythagorean model just won't work. They won't believe in paying that type of price for a closer. But mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Maybe there's a world in which the athletics are looking around and saying, hey, nobody's willing to pay the, that insane price. So. We're just going to try to get what we can get because there's no point to letting an asset kind of expire a little bit while we're playing in a triple A stadium for the next few years. Um, is it worth trading a, a big price to try to add Mason Miller? Well, I, I look at it from the A's standpoint. I think this is the year they have to trade. Yeah. They have to because his value right now will never be higher than it is. Never. I mean, all those years of control, but – He's still healthy right now. Uh, you really want to roll the dice on the, in the second half of this season, make it through spring training where he's okay, make it through the first half of next year. He's not going to perform any better than he is right now. No way. He's not. And yeah. so this is the area, this is the time where you have to sell. You have to. And so you have to maximize. I think you have to go into this the next week if you're the A's and say, he's going to be traded. And maybe it's not exactly what we're looking for, but if we get 87% of what we're looking for, we have to be willing to pull the trigger. And I understand the Orioles trepidation in that, uh, that it's not in their DNA to do so. But in our, we did a, uh, we did a draft trade show for talking baseball. There were four of us on it. Go look it up. It's really yeah. fun. There's yeah. eight, you know, 32 guys that got drafted and I have Mason Miller. He was my first round pick. I had the back end of the snake draft. So I had picks four and five and he was in my first round. So I had him going to Baltimore. I know it's probably not going to happen, but I have him on the move. I, I look, man, I, I am not saying that the Orioles can't win a world series with Craig Kimbrell as their closer. I, I think it's possible, but I think we're all going to be very, very nervous about that. And mm -hmm. Um, if, if they can somehow avoid it's, it's very enticing, that possibility. It is really, really enticing. Yeah. But I think of it this way, how many, you're not alone. How mm -hmm. many teams, and I'm talking about good playoff teams right now. Yeah. Aren't, aren't double fastening a seatbelt. Well, October yeah, yeah I, I, I'm, I'm staring at your hat right now. Like I can yeah. think of, I can think of one. Right. <laughs> Right. I mean, but we've got plenty of other issues to make sure we get to the ninth <laughs> inning with a lead in Cleveland. But so Devin Williams, assuming he comes back from this back issue, OK, sure. is probably one. Sure. Um, the rest, the Dodgers, like I don't even know who's going to be their closer when they get to the ninth inning. Right. right. Evan Phillips couldn't get through the game last night and he's had some 
bumps in the road. They do have other guys like Daniel Hudson has closed out a World Series, so that's nice for them. But, you know, Clay Holmes made the all-star team. There are Yankee fans who are like, well, he doesn't provide enough swing and a miss. So virtually every team has got issues. Uh, Craig Kimbrell is a borderline future Hall of Famer, and yeah, I'd be nervous as hell if I were going. <laughs> that's the reality. Giving him a three-two lead tonight. <laughs> that's that's what we deal. Uh, yeah, he until like a month ago, he hadn't had a single one-run save all season. So, you know, it's uh, it's what it is. All right, Chris, what can I plug for you, brother? Nothing. We're just you know we keep doing baseball today. That's every day, Monday through Friday. You can join us live on our YouTube channel. Just check out what time it fluctuates a little bit, but it's usually right around noon Eastern, sometimes 1130 a.m. Eastern if you want to join us live. And if you just want to do it at your disposal on demand, it's our YouTube channel, JM Baseball, or wherever you download your podcast. And then the Chris Rose Rotation, uh, that's a once a week interview show. Austin Hedges is out right now, super entertaining. Uh, we get different guys from around the league, plus our stable of a half dozen active um you know, major leaguers that, that join us and football today is twice a week. I'm doing that as well with Justin Pennick and Bobby Skinner and, you know, football's in full swing. I imagine that's your, uh, your uh, little Ravens fans there. Little Ravens fans, little Ravens fans. Yeah. Two, yeah. Two How, little kids. How's it working with Deshaun Watson? Exactly. How's that working? Well, the last time I saw him in a game, I, it, we, it, we, that was the one was pretty good. Yeah, in Baltimore. That was the one. That was the one. You know? Of course. Of course. Yeah, it was. 14 for 14 in the second yeah. half with a broken shoulder. Uh, it's all right. We'll, we remember, we remember it. We remember yeah. it. Well, we remember well, it. Well, yeah, maybe next, maybe this year in the playoffs, your offensive coordinator will decide to hand the running ball, the, uh, the uh, football to a running back. Brother, at some point. brother, if you think that you think it's nuts, we, we will spend nine months until they play another football game. It's all we can think about in this city. It's all we can think about. Yeah, you uh, see that big guy, number 22, in the yeah, backfield, hand yeah. it to let him run it's, it. It's so funny, dude. Like every time somebody was talking about, hey, they're thinking about going out and getting a running back. I'm like, I, I don't know that spending money on a running back is what a team needs to be doing in 2024. But this team after that, I get it. I get it. Do everything in your power to not forget that you have a running back on your roster. Do everything you can do. Uh, yeah. Chris, you're a, you're a gem of a person. Always appreciate you, man. Thank you for taking the time for us today. My, my pleasure, Glenn. Take care.